Why does it seem like it would have been best if I was never born? Because in every turn of life, I am met with suffering. What life is this? What sort of life is this? It begins with suffering, ends with suffering, it is suffering. And always will be suffering. And those small gaps within life, those moments where we laugh and talk to one another, those moments of great joy and love, they are a few. As the great philosopher Nietzsche once said, perhaps I know best why it is man alone who laughs. He alone suffers so deeply that he had to invent laughter. But we can live with suffering. What we cannot live with is meaningless suffering. You know, suffering for no reason at all. We are surrounded by a fearful void. We live in an empty, meaningless cosmos. But we want meaning. We want to make things seem meaningful to us so that we have an excuse to live. But this suffering, it is too much to bear, too much to fight against. What can we do? We hope for better days. We'll have to wait and see. Can you relate to what I just said? Let's consider three different visions of the human condition. Remember I said different. Not three human conditions, but three different visions of the human condition. The first one is that this whole world was planned for us. And that we were also planned for it. That we are the chosen people of this world and that the world reinforces our existence, that it wants us here. Our natural response is the desire to know it, to contemplate it, and we think that we naturally fit into it. We'll call this the designed world. But in this modern era, it has somewhat disappeared and only a few believe in it. The second one is that the world is not designed for us. But it is neither alien, it is not foreign to us, it is not terrifying or harmful, the world is neutral, it is flexible. All we must do is understand it through science and to control it through technology. We must fit into it since it does not fit us by design. We must work on the world, transform it into something that we can call home. We must create our own places. We'll call this the perfectible world. And then the third one, the final version, is that the world is foreign. It was not designed for humans, nor are they designed for it. We don't fit here. We don't belong here. And we will never fit or belong here. It's a horrible world. A terrifying world. And we will never come to terms with this fact. It's a place where humans suffer without meaning. We'll call this the horrific world. This is Nietzsche's view. The horrific cosmos. According to Nietzsche, we cannot get rid of all suffering, we cannot remove it, and that the hope within us to remove it all will only weaken us. Instead, we must develop the strength to endure it. We have to toughen ourselves up and stand in the face of the fact that this world is terrifying. We need more suffering because it has created all enhancements of man so far. If we look deeply into the horror of existence, Nietzsche believes we will be paralyzed, overwhelmed by it. We will not be able to act in accordance to the truth of the horror of existence because we know very well that our actions cannot change anything in the eternal nature of things. Instead, what Nietzsche suggests is that we must accept that there is a profound illusion within us that makes us think that there is some form of unshakable thought that can penetrate the deepest abysses of being and that makes us think that our thoughts are capable not of not only of knowing being but even correcting it because even this sublime metaphysical illusion accompanies science as instinct in Nietzsche's view, we cannot change things. Instead, we will feel it to be ridiculous or humiliating that we should be asked to set right a world that is out of joint. And whether you decide if suffering is reducible or not, it all comes to a halt with this quote by Nietzsche. Once upon a time, in some out-of-the-way corner of that universe which is dispersed into Numberless twinkling solar systems, there was a star upon which clever beasts invented knowing. That was the most arrogant and mendacious minute of world history, but nevertheless it was only a minute. After nature had drawn a few breaths, the star cooled and congealed, and the clever beasts had to die. 
the world existed before us it will exist without us our existence is just the cause of an accidental moment in biological time and the time that awaits our perish will confirm the horror and the absolute meaningless of our existence nietzsche however does not reject all forms of change for example he has theories like the ubermensch also known as superman and the will to power now just to remove that curiosity and reduce your suffering let me explain what these two things are nietzsche suggests the concept of the superman or the ubermensch whose distance from conventional humanity is greater than the distance between man and beast thus the superman rejects all conventional human practices and values and invents his own values which in relation to the existing values will be new ones and the drive of the superman which is the will to power helps the superman perfect and transcend himself but what nietzsche rejects is the sort of change that seems necessary for a perfect world he claims that science and technology cannot change the internal nature of the world he rejects the idea that we can significantly reduce physical suffering nietzsche claims that we can construct meaning in this inherently meaningless world to simply hide the truth that exists within the horror of existence but the existence of horror in this life will always exist you should instead endure this suffering and understand that suffering is a part of life nietzsche quotes to live is to suffer to survive is to find meaning in the suffering nietzsche also says to those human beings who are of any concern to me i wish suffering desolation sickness ill treatment indignities i wish that they should not remain unfamiliar with profound self contempt the torture of self mistrust the wretchedness of the vanquished i have no pity for them because i wish them the only thing that can prove today whether one is worth anything or not that one endures so what is nietzsche saying he is saying that he wishes suffering desolation sickness ill treatment and humiliations to any one of that concern to him he wishes that they never ever remain unfamiliar to self hatred that they are tortured by self mistrust that they feel the unhappiness of being defeated he has no remorse for them why because this is the only thing that proves if someone is worth anything nietzsche asserts that life without pain is meaningless pain is the source of all value in the world it is the test of one's 